Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. In previous videos, I've shown you how to make uh, your own LED canopies. In this case, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this uh, old fluorescent style canopy and I'm going to convert it to LED. Uh, this is actually off a client's tank, uh, a client I've had for quite some time. And you can tell that by uh, this fluorescent canopy has been around long enough that it doesn't even have a quick start ballast. You can see that little hole there uh, right by my left hand. That is where the flash starter uh, goes. And I tried getting a new one from uh, my suppliers, uh, but none of them uh, could find one for me. I'm sure I could find one on eBay or something else, but I figured uh, this is a good time just to gut this whole thing, remove all the plastic bits, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an uh, insert out of aluminum parts. Uh, these, well, <laughs> you can't have a build, or at least I can't have a build without showing my belt sander. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to make an aluminum frame, and then I'm going to attach, uh, as in the other video, uh, my LED parts to it. And then I'm going to insert it and hold it with brackets into the old canopy. So what we're going to do here is after I get this all uh, sanded, I'm going to build the frame, uh, same as before. I'm going to hold it together with uh, screws. I like this style uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, first off, it's sturdy. Uh, secondly, it has really good heat dissipation. Not that these really get that warm, but I find that the components really do last a lot longer if uh, they're not put in any kind of undue stress. Uh, so this is actually just a great way of just making sure everything stays nice and cool and I don't have to worry about anything being in contact with anything else. And because this is going into an old plastic canopy, I mean, that is old plastic. Uh, I was very concerned when I was uh, taking it apart and drilling it and whatnot about to actually end up uh, you know, cracking the plastic. So that's <laughs> that shows you how old it is. So here I'm doing is just going through the process of sanding it down. This is very uh, almost identical, really, to uh, those older videos. Uh, there's a few things I've changed since I uh, made that one. I don't really go to a lot of uh, trouble now to silicone. I do still put this electrical tape on the aluminum, even though I have tried, uh, like in the shop here, to uh, short these things out just to see if it's uh, if there's any danger whatsoever of uh, the tapes coming in contact with the aluminum, but I, I couldn't. But I always just err on the side of caution because uh, it is so simple just to put these on that I don't really want to have to worry about uh, if they're actually at some point in time becomes uh, a problem with it shorting. So like I said, it's just easier to do it just this way. So I'm going to put the tape on and then we're going to go through the process of uh, soldering on the uh, power supply. Now I still use these zip ties just to hold everything in place. Normally, uh, like one of the first videos I think I showed you guys, I uh, siliconed the actual tape on. But I haven't had any issues with it falling off, so I've just gone now to just using uh, the zip ties and it seems to work quite well. Now this is a simple matter of uh, soldering the leads on. And it, like I said, it's uh, exactly the same as before. Oh, actually one thing I forgot to do in this video is I didn't show, uh, I didn't record when I'm done putting all these uh, uh, soldering joints on and those little exposed joints that you see there, I don't leave them like that. I actually do still put a dab of silicone over them just to prevent any kind of corrosion on the wires and such. Uh, but apparently I didn't remember to uh, record that bit. So these, like I said, I don't know how the world survived before the uh, invention of zip ties, but I find them extremely handy here. It just holds everything in place and it uh, works really quite well that way. So now this is on here, I just have to attach uh, the solder joints to uh, the other strip and it's very straightforward. Uh, it's just make the positive go to the positive, the negative to the negative. And one thing I've re uh, figured out over the, the time of making these, you don't actually have to do it on the end because this is uh, DC current. You can solder at any point from one strip to the other strip, uh, it can be in the middle, on the end, uh, wherever you like, as, as long as the positive goes to the positive, the negative goes to the negative, it will fire up and it will work fine and I haven't found any hiccups with uh, doing it any of the other ways. So now I just have to connect it to the original side and then what I'm going to do here is uh, fire it up and make sure it works. That's another thing I do a lot now, uh, just to be on the safe side, I, once I build something along these lines, especially if it's for a client, 
I will uh, leave it in the shop for a week and I'll run it, make sure everything stays uh, uh, working properly. And then after it's running for a full day, I can check to make sure everything's cool, uh, make sure there's no issues with the ballast getting overheated and that sort of stuff as well. And it's just a it's just a good idea in general, just to not you know not take anything for granted. So here we are; it's all ready to fire up. And like I said, those two uh, soldering points that you see there, I will uh, put a dab of silicone on them just to keep them safe. And then, of course, I did not show that. So there we go, the canopy is all set. So what we're going to do now is uh, set it inside after I uh, finish uh, pulling these wires out. Uh, it was a bit stubborn and hard to get those out, but I ended up managing to do it without cracking anything, which was great. And then what we're going to do is, uh, off camera again, I will uh, make the two brackets that are going to hold this into place. Uh, just uh, It's the same uh, angle, uh, lunum, a uh, one inch angle. And what I'll do is uh, just drill a hole, uh, just to make sure that it uh, holds this in place. I want it to be removable, uh, just in case I need to repair it, so it's not actually being uh, glued in place or anything. This is the bracket. It's going to actually go on the inside, and it's already been pre-drilled. But I want to very gently uh, drill through the plastic here. That's why it's taking so long. Uh, the other thing is, uh, normally I don't like holding things free hold freehand like this because I'm you know concerned about things uh, chattering or whatever but this will not fit in my uh, my milling machine so I actually had to do this freehand like this but I was very slow and cautious and didn't end up cracking anything which is uh, which is good because I uh, don't think I could replace this canopy at this point the next step after this will be uh, putting uh, the wires in I'm gonna feed it through the hole that's left there and then it's a matter of soldering up these joints. Uh, what I'm going to do is, this is uh, just tinning the wires, and then I'm going to hold them together and uh, solder them together. I pre-tin wires simply because it makes the soldering joint well stronger, and also it makes it a lot easier to join them together. And you'll notice I, <laughs> I use a lot of tweezers holding things together. It gives me a chance to get really close to the solder joint and keeps my fingers nice and cool. So what I'm going to do is the same to the next three. And then what we're going to do here is uh, just use heat shrink uh, tubing and we're going to make sure that those joints are held together quite nicely. The tubing also has insulating properties so it will uh, prevent them from coming in contact with each other and uh, also from any uh, shorts happening. So once these three are secured, what I'm going to do is uh, feed them into a larger diameter piece of heat shrink and then I will uh, cut it out to size and uh, shrink it down to hold it even more firmly. I find the heat shrink is really quite good for this because uh, it makes it look uh, a lot more professional. Even though in this particular case uh, no one's ever going to see this, uh, it just uh, makes everything uh, nicer and neater. The funny thing is though is once I've done this, um, for some reason <laughs> I thought it also required, well, overkill and I ended up uh, using uh, electrical tape as well on top of it all even though it really wasn't necessary. And again, of course, got to need a little piece of uh, a zip tie there. And uh, just, like I said, this is just getting to the point of silliness for overkill. But again, I don't think this is ever going to go anywhere. So now it's a simple matter of uh, putting everything into place and attaching uh, the wire to the frame here so that uh, it can't be pulled out at all. And then I'm going to add the two brackets on, and then we're uh, pretty much good to go. Uh, it's just, like I said, I use the brackets uh, and bolt them into place simply because I don't want this to uh, move anywhere, but I also want it to be removable. So uh, again, uh, no sense in uh, gluing anything to place and that sort of stuff. So just a simple bolt to hold it in place. And the bolts are going to be in the back, so you'll never see them. Uh, so it'll all be nice and neat. So now it's a matter of bringing this to the clients and uh, firing it up to show you guys what it looks like. Uh, this tank uh, ended up going without uh, uh, light for a little while while I was looking for uh, the replacements for the original uh, flash starter. So uh, all the plants ended up having to be removed, so I'm going to have to restock this after this. <laughs> so here it is with it running. Uh, I'm going to unplug it to show you the difference. Uh, there's a lot of glare in here, but uh, I think you can see that it lights up quite nicely. Uh, I didn't wire a switch into this, uh, so it'll have to be on a timer. But I find timers work a lot better for this sort of situation anyway because uh, people are very busy and they don't remember to turn lights on and off uh, necessarily when they should. So anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching.
If you like this style of video, please uh, like and or subscribe, and just let me know in the comment section below if there's uh, any other sort of video you would like me to make. Uh, there's a bit of a backlog I'm still working on. Uh, this is my third video for uh, January, and I am going to try to keep making uh, one every week, and uh, hopefully I'll definitely keep up with that. Anyway, thanks again, uh, uh, we'll see you in the next video.